Happy holidays. Hey there. So I wanted to do a quick video um, to show one of the setups I've got on my DMC 122 with uh, with Gemini. And uh, the way I tried to set this up is usually my setups um, are really just ways to manage presets. So uh, programmable A, uh, one through seven preset buttons mapped to a bunch of different presets for the top manual. And same thing for B, 11 through 17, they map to a bunch of presets on the, on the bottom manual. Um, and that's really as, as elegant as my uh, setups tend to get. Um, uh, however, what I wanted to try and do was uh, create a setup that would be, uh, would, would allow me to kind of tweak things on the fly a little bit better. Kind of, you know, some instruments where they really have the effects all laid out on there and it's easy uh, in the moment. Uh, so you're jamming or you're in a gig or something and you want to adjust uh, parameters. I, I don't want to dive into a menu. I don't want to be that guy, uh, you know, doing this uh, during a show. Nobody does. So, um, so I wanted to make sure that all these wonderful controls we have here can take advantage of them in that way. So what I've done is all of the programmable A section is really dedicated to the control of, um, of certain effects parameters. And then B is just selectors for the uh, presets on the top manual. Now what I've done with the bottom manual here is uh, this is full-time tone wheel. Um, the right side draw bars uh, are dedicated to that uh, as well as the, uh, the knobs uh, here and the uh, sort of percussion layout and uh, chorus and verbal layout. Those are and sort of you know standard dedicated to uh, to you know the Hammond. So I always know you know uh, wherever I am at least I got that. Um, but what I did here was let's say um, I've got on uh, on my first preset on the right side I've got an electric piano so a time piano there, and then I've got a whole bunch of different effects over here on the right which are the same for all of my presets so I don't have to sort of memorize different things. And then what I've done is I've tried to take the corresponding drawbar. So for programmable button one um, is an effect on off. So that's distortion on off. So here's without. Now if I turn it on, there's a light distortion. But if I pull out the drawbar here for one, that is the corresponding um, level. I can get a little bit more distortion on there. Maybe that's too much. Maybe I just want a little bit of a bark. Uh, you know, while I'm while I'm soloing, I want to you know maybe give me something to put me on top a little bit better, so I can throw in some distortion. And then I'm back to my niceness. Uh, on B, I've got uh, either tremolo or vibrato, depends on the uh, on the actual preset that I'm using. But in this case. Um, it's a panning effect, so if we've got it on. That's that's heavy. You could do a little bit, a little bit less. Now let's say I want some distortion on top of that. Boom! I can add a little bit. Now for D over here, I've got a little chorus, so maybe we want that, you know. Now I can also add whichever effects I want at the same time. So if I want a heavy panning with, with a bit of uh, chorus in there. Like that, you know. On E, I've actually got a uh, rotating speaker, so which is great for distortion. I'll show you that in a clav in a second. Um, if I hit F1 over here, it puts it in break mode, so I don't have to worry about a chorus effect. I'm just taking advantage of the uh, the preamp and the cabinet. So that's pretty cool. Now, if I wanted to, I could turn the break off. So something like that. Um, also, I can break. And then back into fast. Pretty cool. OK, 
got the uh, phaser on here, so I can go just a little subtle phaser sound. That's not so subtle. Or we go full on BGs. Something like that. And then on seven, I've got um, a delay. So seven controls the amount of delay, and eight actually controls the time. Yeah, we can do space echo stuff. Ho, ho, ho. Now, all of those effects are pretty much the same for each instrument. So on 12 over here, let's say I want to switch over to uh, an electric piano, a uh, reed piano. Now I've got... No, no, it needs more bark. I'm gonna put a little distortion on that. A little super tramp though, man. Let's get some, uh, let's get a little bit of chorus on there. that. Now on uh, 13 I've got a clav setup which is pretty cool by itself so I got distortion on that by default or I could shut distortion off. It's not funky enough man. I need a little bit of wah on there. It's not there yet. I need more uh, something. Uh, let's go distortion. Ooh. More. I need more. I'm going to go with a little bit of Leslie break uh, and a little bit more amp on there. Oh man, I'm dying, it's awesome. Or if I'm just going uh, straight up Steely Dan, I'll just throw a little phaser on there. I mean, you kidding? Yeah, no, it's happening. Um, and I've got a bunch of other things set up on here. So if we look at 14, I kind of went with just a poly synth. You know, what are, what are you going to need when you're playing live gig and you don't know what you need? You just get the bread and butter stuff. So, you know. Eh, I need more chorus. So I'm going to go over here to chorus. Turn that on. Give me a little. All right, don't tell me I'm playing it wrong because I know I'm playing it wrong. So whatevs. Uh, what else do I got over here? Ah, uh, so a little bit of. Dance piano, that's one of the sort of new sounds that they added. That's not cutting through the band, man. I want some distortion on there. That's cool, that'll add a little bit more. Not as bright, but it gives you a little bit more body. Uh, 16, what do I got here? a little distortion huh? maybe that's your thing sometimes you don't know until you're in the thick of a gig or a rehearsal and you're not cutting through the way you want so it's awesome to be able to just like you know play with this stuff as uh, as you think you might need it so, so I mean I can't tell you the number of times where you, you play something at home, and you're like, that's awesome, that's right what I want. And then in the context of the band, you know, you, your tone's getting sucked up by everything else, and you either you need something to put you over the top, or maybe there's too much bass, and you got to pull some of that out, or, you know, some of the body. Um, so it's, in a, you know, depending on the room and the amplification and the ensemble, everything needs to be uh, flexible and dynamic. So before I go, I do want to talk about the, sort of the most efficient workflow for setting up. I um, mean, this is in any context. I found that I like to put um, both the DMC editor 
and the uh, the Gemini editor up at the same time. Now, how am I doing that? I have um, the computer right now is connected via Wi-Fi to um, to the Gemini. So right now it's uh, looking at um, the Wi-Fi signal from the Gemini, and I've got a USB cable that is going to the DMC 122 controller. Now, why would I do that? Uh, well, it's what happens is oftentimes you may want to control a parameter. Um, and you get to that parameter in in the editor, and it says, um, you know, the uh, the continuous controller is set to off. So then you got to click on it and map it to a new controller, and then you got to ensure that the controller on the DMC is mapped correctly to the number that you just selected, and then you got to save everything. And if you're trying to do that on an iPad or a phone and the computer, and you're going back and forth, and you're trying to save over here, it gets kind of unwieldy. I think that if you're able to sort of put all that on the screen at one time, um, I found that I was able to fly through uh, creating setups because it's all there. There's no jumping back and forth. It's really like, all right, this screen is this parameter and it's mapped to this particular uh, physical controller and good to go. So, you know, that's uh, my relatively short video on maybe a different kind of setup that, that maybe you hadn't thought of uh, when approaching your DMC. So I'm trying to get it out of just a preset box. Uh, so here's a uh, example of a you know, DX piano. I'm gonna add myself a little bit of yeah, oh yeah, but we need chorus because it's the 80s, man. I've got B3 down here, so I'm gonna go down to the bass. We want a little bit, a little bit of punch in that bass, so. Sky's the limit. So, go forth.